against him. Uh, I'm one of the lead designers at Legacy Effects. I also own an animation studio called DR Stagio, which is Tokyo based in Shinjuku. Um, I have one as my plan for today is to do a uh, sculpture for Zebra's Pixel Logic. I'm going to sculpt Paul. Let me show you guys. I like this. Oh. I like this sculpture. I do like this sculpture. So I got two photos of Paul here. So I So you need. And Paul's also standing in front of me. So I'll be able to reference the real Paul. And I also have his photos here. So we're going to get started. Let's do it. I can't stand looking at myself. I don't. I don't. <laughs> No, but look at this. Guy, my wife's look at his lovely face. Look at this. No. How I don't many awesome photos. features can we choose from here? Just go. Do Fantastic. Burn them now. Your wife can So, I am used, I don't have a custom UI. Um, I like to use ZBrush just straight out of the box because lots of times as a production artist, sometimes you have to go all over the place and sometimes you don't have the tools that you need. So, I like to be able to use a program the way it is. Stock or stranded or not used to what you were working with. So, I uh, have a basic star tool in here uh, just to keep symmetry. Uh, sometimes, symmetry I'm a star! Star! If you put in the basic star, symmetry will always be aligned to that star, so you can keep symmetry and scale based on that first object. So, which has to stay with the first object you put into the program. It locks that object as your center of the but it also locks the object scale. In production artist, scale is so important. If you use scale, it's lots of times you can cause a lot of issues. And I don't want to get the star, and I don't want to get the star sculpting away. I'm just going to start with the star. That's nice. And there, so I'm turn the star off. So, ZBrush has this fancy see-through feature, which is fantastic. So, the first line up the profile here. Actually, let's line up the front just first. So, a little bit. So, look at that big, glorious face. Big, glorious head. I don't even <laughs> like looking at it in the mirror. <laughs> Look at, those, look at those doors for ears. <laughs> there it is, face. Adjust the scale at different times for now. Line this ball up. Like that. I'm going to come over here to the documents so we can always keep snapping back to that location. Exactly properties. Basic tools. I like to use the. Uh, and then I press. So without using the hot keys, that way you guys can always see what I'm selecting. Press B, brush hands, come back, see, and then brush. Dag, I'm done. Perfect. <laughs> Make it a bobblehead. <laughs> so when you're doing like this, you're just pretty much using a couple brushes for yourself. For you? Yes. Uh, all I use, you guys really tend to just use the clay build-up brush, maybe the uh, damp standard brush, and the move brush. Three brushes is all you need. ZBrush has a plethora of brushes, but the thing I like about ZBrush is that, um, much like some of the other fantastic colors out there, Photoshop, there's so many ways you can approach doing something. And you can always, whatever is comfortable, it will get there. So, like I said, right now I have symmetry on just because we'll turn it off later. But, uh, Right now, that's crazy. These are just four. 
Are you trying to do skull structure first, or are you just trying to line up the profiles? Usually, it depends. Usually, I will do just lining up the profiles first, and then I'll start, as I keep moving through, I start to correct the forms and the and stuff like that. I usually do it just kind of really rough and fast, and so I'll just try to get, get the shape from the images. Like I said, if I'm using a, if I'm using a photo, I usually just try to line up just the main key points of the person. And I notice, I realize that when I do that, it allows me to capture the person a little easier. And if I'm trying to, and especially if I'm trying to go quickly, like if I'm going very slow, I'm trying to make sure I'm strategic. I don't know the muscles and lines and skull structure and stuff right first. It takes me longer to then make it look like a person. So I can make it look like a person much quicker if I treat it almost just like a quick loose plain sketch. You know, I'm just throwing all the plane, throwing it out, and then as I get everything, as I start to get the form, I'll shape, take away what I don't need, put back what I need. So you're staying loose in the beginning, really. You're staying pretty loose and making sure you this form. That way I'm not getting married, I'm not getting married to it. Man, I use that saying all the time. Don't get married to the reference. Right, exactly. Get married. I'm gonna make the greatest skin pores ever. <laughs> exactly. But his nose is on the forehead. That's okay. Exactly. It's like right now, just work, which is why I have symmetry on the moment. And then eventually I'll turn symmetry down. So you don't use Dynamesh when you're doing this? You stay in subdivision levels? I do use Dynamesh. Okay. I, I, but at the moment, I only have the, the, the two, just one subdivision level. But at the end, eventually I'll use Dynamesh. So we don't start in Dynamite. I don't start in Dynamite. I just like that skinny hand. Oh man, James, I don't know if he'll have time to put me in a robot crop or Iron Man suit. I would take it though. Depends on what robot crop. It's the most recent one, all that's left of them is his head. So I guess the most recent one would work. So during another asking, what do you use? Well, what do you use your skulls for? Do you use them for collectibles? No, I use them. When you're sculpting, so you're sculpting. He sculpts for legacy effects, and then he also has his own studio, uh, Tokyo based, and then you also do some work with Sideshow as well. So you answer. Should I also answer? I'm just answering for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So you say focused on my ugly bug. And that fantastic face. Yeah. My wife thinks so. <laughs> but to answer the question, yeah, he will do likenesses for pieces like collectibles. Right. He works a lot, and he works in the film industry, so he'll have to deal with people, actors and actresses, work with their likenesses as well. What? Mostly for collectibles. Mostly for collectibles. Mostly for collectibles. For movies, we have scans. So we're, then we're just building and designing costumes or creatures. And right. For collectibles, you don't have that to go from. You know, just have, you just have. And do you prefer working on a pad like this or on like a touch screen? I've never tried to walk on the touch screen. So I've never tried working on this. So it's foreign to me. So I prefer to have it. I friends that work their own lives in the afternoon. The classes I've taken in this, like, they all swear by the walk-on, you know, 
touchscreen setup. I I got my MacBook with like a pad. Do you, do you sure which like is the considered professionally acceptable? Say it. So I'm never sure which is considered professionally acceptable, the pad or the screen or both. Both as long as the job's done, I guess. Yes, exactly. They don't care as long as you are able to get it finished. So I have a lot of friends that use the pads and a lot of friends that use the you know, tablets. It's kind of whatever you're most comfortable with. You know, I've started using the pad so I'm just comfortable with it. Is there like a general rule that you have, like a levels of subdivision you go before you start getting into more and more details? Like, you know, or you just sort of feel it out? Uh, I kind of feel it out. Like, okay. I generally don't worry about details until you're ready for that, which is much later. You know, right now, the main thing is just trying to get the actual walks. So I generally won't worry about that until Darnell, are you planning to come to Zebra Summit this year? Uh, and weekend of the 17th, uh, and weekend of September. And weekend of September, maybe, depends. Because usually I, get, I tend to get really busy on projects around that time. Yeah. So usually it depends. But, but uh, if I have, if I'm not busy, then, but if I am busy, then it really depends.
Yeah, there it is. Are these? They're pretty big. They stop, they don't stop growing, so it's only going to get worse from here on out. Exactly. Yeah, well, I think my grandfather had pretty big ears, so... My grandpa did too. I'm pretty much going to accept that, uh... I'm Dumbo, I'm just going to fly. <laughs> Right now, Darnell also keeps looking up at me, so I'm standing in front of him. So besides using the images, he's doing this freehand style as well, just so everybody knows. The images were just for his quick blocking out. I'll use the images more as I get the photos, you know, because my photos are not very good. I, re I quickly, re I was like, why is his face keep being so skinny? Because I took one photo like this is a one photo that's different. So they are not lined up, which happens very often when you just have red photos. But Do you mean stay in profile? Now I know what the models felt like in my art classes. <laughs> Set them a little bit warmer. Do you always do it this way? You don't take like VDM brushes with that already have noses and ears and kind of just place them in and you? you like to work from scratch all the time? I like scratch all the time. Yeah, but I did like, it, um, It's funny because I was... The, um, Yeah, no, I do. 
that or I'll go to your place. Kevin Blanchard says, trip seeing you on the Pixel Logic Twitch. Oh man, <laughs> tell him, hello Kevin. It's, uh, it's a trip being here. I usually don't uh, work live, it's fun. It's scary and fun. See you guys. Let me know when you, what you want me to turn. Okay. Right now you're good. He's just sculpting you in the head at this point. He's sculpting me. He's doing a live sculpt of me right now. What's up, buddy? What's up, brother? What's up, brother? How you doing? Doing good. What did you get here? Uh, this. Oh, okay. You're here, hotel. The whole rest of the weekend? No, 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 just in a day. Like a side show. Party. Party. Yeah. Drove down. Yeah, just you or? Yeah, this guy, Cornelan. Where's Glau? Can you go over there? Oh, Igor's here. Oh, is he? But he's uh, somewhere else. Oh, okay. Okay, all, all weekend, non stop. Yep, we've been here since Monday morning. First time? Monday night. Yeah. First time in the. Yeah. Yeah, first time with booth, yes. How's it been? Good, it's been busy. It's been busy, and then we're streaming these. Yeah, so artists are jumping on, uh, we do an hour, hour session, 30 minutes between the whole break, and then we're streaming them live. Darnell's doing a sculpt of me right now. Yeah. Right now it looks like an alien. She's doing Later it'll look like a good looking alien. <laughs> Do a likeness on the fly. Yeah. Things good at Sony. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, a lot art of cool stuff. Art directing. Yeah, that's good. Well, that's good. Yeah, your video was blew up about your print. Yeah. That's funny because after that, I got I got two more. Now I have to do videos about. Oh really? Just turning into this hobby. You, are you doing? Are you gonna do anything with Formlabs? I think you said you weren't gonna be able to, right? I try. Yeah. I get a lot of like some test test stuff. So I'll tell you, offer like I'll send the model will pay for you. Like I'll do you have now? You got the one room for all that? The garage is too to Right. And the kids are sure coming out and checking it out. Yeah. Because your oldest is five. Four. 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 Yesterday, I was like, I wanted to make all the controls. He makes live streaming just recording. Yeah, live streaming. Yeah. Well, let's do it. You're going to do it. Jaime and O'Farrell here on Saturday. Tomorrow, like something. I love knowing you so much. Right now, they're in poor mode. You're ready for the summit? It doesn't matter. I'm converting like two seconds. My box is... The light box is before the summit. The light box is the, I think the first weekend of September, and then more the last. And I already put you in a time slot. I think I put you in on Saturday. And then there's also a party. <laughs> yeah. I'm not really worried about you. You've done it before. I'm hitting in kind of a uh, deadline mode with all the light box stuff that I'm trying to do. So Are you going to have a table of light box? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go to Lightbox and go walk. It should be pretty huge. Yeah, I'm talking to Bobby here too. He's done a good job. He's got a huge show for the first one. Yeah, it is crazy.
the fight sideshow. So um, on this side of the sideshow collectibles at that far corner, you'll actually right across. But he said he's going to be walking around most of the other year, so I don't know if he'll be at his booth. Because I asked him, he said, are you going to be in the booth? So no, this is the first year he's going to actually walk around. So he might still. I keep seeing a lot of different light bulbs. Yeah, he's probably dropped them on them. So. Sunday's the best day. Sunday's probably the best day, the day especially if you want deals. So you don't want to ship everything home. Right? So they'll make a deal with it. Get discounts on stuff. Yeah. Unless they have to package up, then home the better. I usually come on Saturdays and it's like the worst. It's like walking like this. A little bit at a time. Coming together. Yeah, I did well. You're halfway through your hour, just so you know, too. Oh, no, okay. Just so you have a time frame. Wrap. Yeah, bye. Thanks for coming by. Ravi Alper said he just walked by everybody. Just so you know. Yeah, light box. Okay. Do you want profile or full? Forward is fine. Forward. Time goes so fast. So for those that are just joining, Darnell's doing a likeness of me live, freehand for the most part. On the showroom floor. On the showroom floor. On the showroom floor. On the showroom. Normally you're just in your office. Yeah, it's chill. <laughs> Do you listen to music when you're doing this? Uh, actually, I work quietly. Really? You like yeah. complete silence? Yeah, so this quiet. is totally not working. <laughs> yeah, it's like very loud. And you're asking me. I can't work in complete silence. I, 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 uh, I always work in silence. Everyone's always like, they don't want music. I'm like, no. And I get to the studio um, late. You know, so I don't start until. Um, afternoon, maybe around uh, uh, 12 or 1, and then I'm working to the evening, so it's super quiet. There's no one there, I'm just working. Wow. And then, uh, yeah, it's nice. Can't do it. You gotta have music, soundtrack, movie soundtracks, movie soundtracks, or even a movie playing in the background. Yeah. Can't like do quiet, especially can't silence. Because it kind of is distracting, you know, that you start looking. You start um, listening to the music and, or watching the movie, you know, so I kind of generally like, just like it to be quiet. It ends up phasing out for me, and it just becomes noise. Hmm. But I need it though, I need that. Right. Like, it's almost like, you know, those, like when you got your kids, your little kids, and they're young playing the shusher thing. Right, right. It's pretty much what it's probably become for me.
Yeah, let's put that. How many people work in silence? Let's, let's put that online now, the viewers. We got one person that likes to work in silence. Who else likes to work in silence? Anybody else? Yeah, well, let's do it. So it's just so nice. <laughs> but again, it's a preference, right? It's, yeah. a, it's like what you're comfortable with, what, where you're getting your vibe, getting your rhythm. Yeah. It's like just work and you know, searching for the memory is the design you're searching for. Some sort of creative spark. You're doing something with it. You don't know what it looks like, it feels like, but just let it go. For me, it's like. So how much anatomy background do you have for yourself, like, as far as classes or teaching or studying anatomy? Yeah, if we don't teach. Yeah. <laughs> but... Oh, it's crash track. Making a say. It didn't like me. It didn't like you. Glad ZBrush has those quick saves. It's amazing. It works so well. I, um, you know, I went to, like I said, I started as a traditional sculptor, sculpting clay, and learned that I've been doing the whole thing for a long time. And then, so, uh, like, yeah, I've been working there for 15 years. Another uh, one, probably. That's it. Or 14, 14. Yeah, that one. No, so these ones they really developed this um original one. It's funny it's like the way that I want it is probably everyone at the shop is always teased me because I definitely want a very high attention. It's like the so is you, your H polish brush is what you use for planing out and getting the planes up the yes. head down? That's your go-to? Yes, H polish brush. I play brush, H polish brush, play brush is to call on shapes. H um, polish brush is to start tightening it out. The, uh, but I was going to try to use the photos, but I think I mostly just use them closer to the end because they are so off from each other. So your head can be really smushed, but that's okay. I use clay buildup usually. I use clay buildup and pitch polish the most. I don't want it. So it's kind of my go to impressions. Side, side, side. side. Slouching. Slouching. Don't slouch. Don't slouch. Mom wouldn't be happy. Mom wouldn't be happy. Sit up straight. Stand up straight. Say much. <laughs> Sorry if it gets quiet. You're in the zone now. What's your Well, welcome, Overlord, first time user on Twitch. Hopefully, you're enjoying. Uh, Darnell, do a likeness of me I'm standing in front of him right now. Standing in front of me. Doing a live likeness. Planes in the head are looking fresh. I like that. How much time do you usually get to do a like this? 
Um, definitely more than an hour. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I usually, think so. Usually, uh, <laughs> usually I could do it like this in about. It usually takes me maybe to get to an exact right person about four or five hours. Oh yeah. So like in a day, you can pretty much yeah, have. In a day, I can have it look like wherever it is it's supposed to look like. Obviously, it's. I was trying to see how it would go doing the whole Comic Con thing. I was like, oh, I want to try and just try and see how it sure. works. But there's uh, there's definitely something to be said about like being watched and talked to while you're working. <laughs> Usually, like I said, it's very quiet and you're yeah. just working. Yeah, it's the complete opposite yeah. of what you used to. <laughs> we like to put some extra pressure on our Exactly. Time. Not only do you have to do a like this live, but there's all this noise that you don't like to work with. Yeah, yeah. And then you got a loud mouth fall in front of you. How's it going? Good. Oh, look how you like the tie, the Vader tie. And the, and the suit. It's just it's like a surprise. Like, it's hitching. And uh, the tie clip. And, uh, got it all. Oh. The backpack? No, that's inside. Yeah. That's massive. So he's doing a likeness of me right now. So he's oh, doing, that's what okay. he's doing. He started about uh, 40 minutes ago. Yes. He started from a, like a sphere. Right now, it does not look like Paul. Just go with it. So, we were just talking, he usually says he takes about four or five hours to get like that. Yes. I'll, I'll go this way, I'm in the way. Um, we have never done uh, New York City Comic Con. In fact, this is our first time doing San Diego Comic Con and having an actual booth and doing something like this. So we weren't sure even how this was going to go with having sculpting live on a Comic Con floor and people walking by. Uh, hopefully, you've been enjoying online watching us, all these artists. It's been a lot of fun. If you are going to be in uh, the Comic Con this weekend, Saturday or Sunday, we are booth number 5120. So come by, say hello, see more artists. Again, they're going for an hour. They have 30 minute gaps. The stream starts at 10 in the morning Pacific time, uh, Saturday and Sunday. And they end uh, tomorrow will end at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. And Sunday will end at five o'clock. Hi. Hi. I'm not crazy, I'm talking to the people online right now. Oh, I thought you were talking to him. No, I know, he's gotta be in his zone. He's trying to do, he's doing a likeness of me. It's not looking like a right now, but it will. But great, he's only been working on this for 45 minutes. But you're not using Photoshop though, right? No. You have a different program? No, this is ZBrush, and then he just took two quick photos of me to get his first block out. Now he just keeps looking up at me and seeing what he can do. I told him to make, him, make me look more sexy, so we're working on that. We're not quite there yet. Make me, me photogenic. Make me photogenic. Not quite there yet. It's like, uh... So how did you start that? Did you take a picture and put it up there? Just a, I mean, it's just a photo that's in the background. So it's not like it's projecting the photo or anything like that. It's just a photo in the background. It's just like the uh, sculptural part of it. The sculptural part of the face. Yeah, it's, not, it's yeah. just, it's just... Sorry, I know I came in like a little later. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, t I took uh, two photos and then they're mostly just uh, for reference. But uh, I was initially just going to sculpt live. Then I was like, oh, let me take a photo. But the problem is the two photos were at such crazy angles so they actually don't line up very well. <laughs> but uh, so now I'm just like, okay, screw the photos. But now I'm just going to continue sculpting. Well, I mean, uh, that's you're doing pretty cool. I I can't even do Photoshop. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, you I'm like, totally I know how you use it, but I can't use it, right? <laughs> you can totally do it. ZBrush is amazing. It's, uh, it allows you to do so much. You know, it, it allows you to um, get, get your, idea, your ideas out in a form other than 2 You can also do 2 as well. Well, you can use this in conjunction with Photoshop. A lot of artists will. They'll sculpt stuff and then paint in ZBrush too, send it over to Photoshop, do paint overs. Some artists will even do renderings out of ZBrush and throw them into Photoshop and composite with Photoshop as well too. This is like starting like you did, ball of clay and just make whatever you want with it. Oh, yeah. But it's other clay. 
Yeah. You can paint. You can paint ZBrush too. And he can bring those textures in and use them and project on project it onto the face if he wants to. So after he does doing all the um, technical stuff like that, uh, do it add hair back or something? Or is it just need like a? No, he's just he's using some of the brushes and he he builds up the surface, so it's like almost like adding strips of clay. And he just took the only only thing he used the two images for was just pretty much get my profile and then get the jawline. And then now he just keeps looking up at me <laughs> as he's going, and uh, it's like kind of like life sculpting. So like when we have to take figurative drawings, same kind of thing. He's just taking that same approach and the same idea, and then doing it sculpturally. I heard. I heard. That's really cool. Yeah, and then you can 3D print it. I don't know why we want to 3D print that. <laughs> All those are 3D prints. <laughs> don't want to 3D print this. No. I don't mean your sculpt, I mean me. I don't no. Although there's a, there is a mini, there is a mini Funko Paul over there. There's there is a mini Funko Paul. Is there? Yeah, they made a Funko version of me, Solomon, and uh, Joseph. Oh, they're over there. They're over there on the on the table. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I was playing that. That's really cool. Yeah. There's like a lot of stuff you see in the show here, like. The collectible stuff, it's all being done in the cell. Toys, collectibles. This is one of the main softwares they use for all that. Yeah. It's funny, those softwares you use literally for like everything. everything. Right. Such a good profile. Every now and then I gotta do this. Super profile. So is your name Face? What's that? Face? No, I grabbed the wrong one for this morning. I didn't even notice it until I got in and I'm like, oh, I grabbed my colleagues. Oh. I grabbed my colleagues badge. I didn't even notice it. <laughs> oh, I didn't even realize your badge didn't say your name. Everybody. Yeah. I didn't even know. I, they were looking at me like, oh, I grabbed the wrong. So what is your real name then? My real name is Paul. Paul Jockman. Nice to meet you. Kim. Kim. Nice to meet you. What's your nickname? Yes. Yeah. Like the God. Oh, okay. Creator and destroyer. Cosplay name. Cosplay name. Not a cosplay name. No, Shiva. I don't know. Uh, were you in cosplay another day? I, I have. I, I have a VFA in theater. So, like, that's another side of me. But going, going on the regulars today. Going on the casual. They use us to make cosplay, too. But that's what that is. That helmet. Stuff like that, too. This is our first time here. I mean, I know oh, really? Here. Never been to Comic Con before. So. Did you hear only today? First time. And only today? No, 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 no. I came yesterday. Oh, okay. I'm going to go tomorrow. Yeah. And? Check out more stuff. It's fun. It's definitely an experience. Yeah. Everyone's got to do it at least once, San Diego Comic Con. At least once. Right, exactly. Yeah. I see a different kind of cocktail. I like that kind of cocktail. I like that kind of cocktail. Yep. I, did you see the Transformers, the guys that are on stilts? Yeah. I heard a buddy of mine was showing pictures, there's guys that transform, they're, they're literally on stilts so they could be tall or Transformers style. Yeah. Like, that's dedication. My ankles hurt right now. And I'm not on stilts. I'm on just the two twigs. So do you want to check out more humans? Or non-humans? I don't know. I haven't heard anything yet, so... Who knows how that Game of Thrones is going, if there's a reveal or no reveal, we will find out. Oh, they out. were doing, I heard it over here, they had the cast over here, I think. Oh, yeah. I think so, yeah, they were yelled at at one point here, I think. Uh-oh. Well, you know the writers canceled last minute, supposedly, like, they were supposed oh, to be really? at the session today at 5.30. How are you going to follow it up? Well, they're doing the pre you know, so... Yeah. But, we'll see what happens. They're, doing, the they're doing it. That's that, that workshop we just went to. Yeah. One of the costume designers, Imogene, oh, she, yeah. she, she got work from the costumes. <laughs> it's like... This so now, how long have you been sculpting portraits? Uh, a long time. It's, it's like, funny because it doesn't look like it right now, but a long time, actually. But uh, the fight thing is... Uh, it's kind of a lot, but it's because you did whenever I start sculpting portraits, I generally just start just trying to 
like me to go. Nice meeting you. Enjoy the show. You're welcome. No, I forgot that the program crashed out on the pockets. The what? I set up uh, some sapling views, but I forgot that the crash is something like that. But but I've been sculpting. Are you going to sculpt today? He's doing a uh, life sculpt of me. Yes, yeah, He's been working out for about 50 minutes. So you got 10 minutes left, just so you know. But uh, it usually takes about 4 or 5 hours. <laughs> yeah, it takes longer than an hour. But without consumption. But I've been sculpting it for a while. The funny thing is that you know, generally, like I said, generally when I sculpt, I start you know, just... I start generally just filling it out and going and you know, for the form. Once you get all the forms, you're really trying to get there. But when you're trying to do a, a live thing, you want it to kind of look like something, so you almost fight against yourself. It's quick in what normally it is. Because you want it to look decent and good. But it ends up not looking good or decent because you're trying to. Yep. They're asking me a quick question over here. Yes, I'm answer, bounce on this answer side. the question.
recently got it uh, a month ago and I've been having so much fun with it. It's, it's a great piece of software so I use it every day for work. And I'm saying it's, it's a little, it's nice because it allows you to just sit and work. You know, right. And, and like, much like Photoshop. However you are know, used to work you don't have to adjust too much. Right. There's like this program has like my, my biggest hurdle with it was just figuring out the interface. Right. That was amazingly hard. <laughs> but once once I figured it out, I, fa I found out it was more just like curating it to what you need immediately. It made it a lot easier. It really is just yeah. about that. It's just like how you like to use the software. Once you get used to that, then it becomes easy. Right. It's, like it's just however you want to work. Have you ever have you ever dabbled in traditional sculpting? Yeah, I'm actually a traditional sculptor. And I started using uh, digital sculpting because of uh, my job. Oh, okay. So my job is uh, concept art and right. design. Yeah. So like I. Uh, so do you mainly do character concepts or is it? Characters, robots, pictures, everything. That's like, yeah. that's, just, so that's like, what I'm aspiring to be, man. Yeah, it's, it's I guess all I both do. Recently, I've been doing as we tell call. Recently, I've been doing a lot of. Uh, like this sculpture, which is funny, so I wanted to try to challenge myself today and try to do a like this live. Oh, Did there you go. Go very well because it was just oh. But it's nice because I've been just doing so many of them. But it's, uh, right. it's nice, it's fun. It's so, fun. do you mind if I ask, like, you doing traditional sculpting, how that's helped you learn ZBrush at all? Or oh, yeah, is that they like worlds apart? Because I, I started in traditional sculpting. That's kind of where my heart's at right now. I stepped away from ZBrush for a little bit because, it's been, like I said, the interface was kind of a tough hurdle to get past. And I started to, but I think I still have a lot to learn with traditional sculpting. I don't know, but do you feel like that's kind of translated into yeah, it definitely ZBrush? Yeah, sometimes the trickiest part is the digital sculpting, but the hardest part sometimes is that it's, you want to like use the rake tool and various things. Like when I first started using ZBrush, you know, when you're traditional sculpting, you use the rake tools, so all these different things to find your forms and your planes. So even now when I use ZBrush, I sometimes want to do that. You know? right. So like you kind of want to fight against doing that, just so using it as it is. Like sometimes, like so. The hardest part is just finding your forms and your planes. The lighting in ZBrush tends to, it's not a real world light, so right. it tends to be a little flat. I told you, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Right. So it's it's, it's, it's the little shadows, so you're trying to fight to get the shadows and fight to get the forms. Yeah. So, and then once you get those in there, then you're solid. You know, but you know what? I think that's probably why I've been having such a hard time with the visual aspect of this guy finding the forms. It's so yeah, much it's very hard, more like, difficult. It's very hard. Traditional sculpting is easy to find the form because you can see it. You know, you can yeah. Feel it. You turn it. You know, you I can turn it. I can feel it with it. my thumbs. I can with make sure. Brush, you can see it. You can feel it. But the hard part is that the lighting is not real world lighting, so it does not affect the place quite the way you think it should. Right. Yeah, so, like, so the hardest part initially is getting it to actually feel. Solid. Yeah. And then once you get used to that, and like I said, not trying to use it like a traditional tool where you're like going to rake all the planes right. because when you rake the surface, then you automatically um, have you have something that's showing you, you know, the right. planes. You know, so like initially you want it's to much more like, like pungent than it is right, with exactly. traditional sculpture. Right, exactly. It's smooth. So it's like, you know, with the traditional sculpture, you want to sit and go like this and, oops, and right. then like go back and forth so that you can actually see right. the surface. You know, so then that way you're not fighting against the lighting. Yeah, that's, a, like, good, that's a good so, point. I like that. It's just like, hard, you know. So like when I first was sculpting a ZBrush, I would constantly use it like this. You know, like I would go through and just be like trying to break through just so I could actually see the surface. You know, yeah. Because it's so smooth. Right. But 
once you get textured, used to you're it, trying to get some sort of texture in there. Right, to get yeah. some texture in there because clay has the texture. That's like forms, that's jumping steps form. ahead though, yeah, right? Exactly. At the same time. So it's yeah. like so you're kind of, because then the problem is it does work like that. But now you have to take all those right marks out of your sculpture. Right. You know, and so then yeah. you start to then lose the form of you, right you know, also. and then you end up finding it. So like so eventually so I've learned to not do it that. You got used to it. But it's a good tip. then the challenge is it takes a little longer to find your form sometimes. And you're like, like even as I'm starting it, I was like, oh, it's just not feeling like even a human, you know, because it's so tricky. But eventually it gets there. And then you just start going, you know, right. then now your form's there and everything. So maybe solid. it's just harder to get into that groove, but once you it's get into it, get into it's much more fluid. fluid. Yeah, it's much more fluid. I, yeah, you know what? I feel like it's kind of been the opposite for me with traditional sculpting. I have a much easier time finding the form, but right. after I find the form, I start losing my mojo. Right. And it's, right. it's harder for me to sit there and... then you start to fight. Uh, right. It almost has the same problem. Traditional sculpting is the same problem. It's like, because of all the rates and forms and everything. Now, you're going back in to put all the more yes, like subtler forms, but that you're fighting all those different surfaces right. that you've created to lock in. You know, now you're trying to, especially as you get more into the artistic details and stuff. Now you're going back in and you get it, make sure you have your bits confirmed that's comfortable for a while. But the, the, the problem I had when I was going through this year, after I got on my page, I would block out my scope to break it. And I would start getting into all the little details and start getting to more details and more details. I found that my tools were not conducive to what I needed them to be. And so right. I had to really start getting into these smaller tools and really get the shapes that I wanted. Well, and the other thing. Thing that I noticed that was a real big hurdle for me was learning when to read to apologize. You know, like when to up the up the resolution. Like, you know, if, like is it okay for me to do it? Yeah, should I be adding detail? The Dynamax feature is nice. The tricky part about the Dynamax feature is getting the right amount of Dynamax that you need. So right. Dynamax is yeah. too much. You're like, okay, that's I can't even sculpt anymore. It's too much. But it did all. And the, the Dynamax is based on the scale. So depending on the size of your thing, the Dynamax affects it differently. And so if it's too if it's really, really large, the diet mesh has to be much larger. You'll be diet mesh for like two, three thousand. But if right. it's a very small object then you really only need to be like you know, forty just to get the subtle diet mesh. Right. Sometimes you only need to be like four or five, depending on the scale of the object. Yeah. Um, part is much it's going to be so that's many, a so really so good one point. One thing I started to do was I actually bring in on my desktop I have foot cube, one inch cube, quarter inch cube. And before I start sculpting, I'll usually wear the foot cube and ZBrush locks it to that scale when you first start. And so whatever the first object is in your city, that's the scale, that's the world, that's oh, the center that. for everything. Okay. So like for us, because when we're making stuff, we're constantly trying to make sure that everything is to a nice scale. Because it needs to be accurate. So if you do that, you bring in a foot cube that you've made in body or something. And that way you know it's actually a foot cube. You want it to be whatever you want. But make sure it's in the center of your then you know that when you bring it in, it's in the center, your symmetry stays locked onto that first object. But your scale also stays locked onto that first object. Because all of the tools in ZBrush now are based on the scale of that first tool that you have in your scene. And so then it makes all the tools, all the different sizes, and everything is all effective. Right. And it's, uh, it's kind of nice. So I usually like to... Uh, That's a really good idea. Because I, I, I think the second one that I ever made, I was working on a spaceship. And I realized, you know, 75% way through that it was way too small. And that's why I was having such a hard time getting, like, just working with the polygons in general. That's a really good idea. It helps so much. Yeah. All right. Shit, man, I really appreciate that. Yes, that's cool. I'll take that with you. All right, man. I'll be around. Take care. I'm just curious. I use Revit for work and they're trying to get me to use um, Rhino oh, cool. to, to design a building and I just don't like it. You don't like Rhino? Rhino's very it's technical, it's a good program, it's an old program, it's solid. So why don't you like it? What do you, what do you prefer with Rhino? Well, because I'm a draftsman, I'd normally say, right, well I want to draw a line or a box or a cube, and I say, right, well I want to draw it you know, 20 by 30 by 15. And you've actually got to draw the cube first in right up and then actually change the dimensions on it. Right, 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 right. To me, that, that's the wrong way around. My right. head doesn't work that way. Right, right, right. Because I mean, I, I started in 92 on AutoCAD. And 
going back from Revit to Rhino in 3D seemed to be going back to 1992 AutoCAD. Right, right, okay. Because it's, 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 I won't say clunky, but it's the way that it does um, orders, command orders. It does it, it's not it's, fluid. It definitely, it definitely doesn't work in a way, like, because it is so, it's, I mean, you can, we use Rhino at work to go directly to a scene. Well, okay, I'll take it back. We used to use Rhino. <laughs> we don't use Rhino as much anymore. Yeah. But, you know, Rhino works so well for going from that to our CNC machines. Uh, that's a nice yeah. way. So, that is why, I mean, that, and that's probably why they have that program working that way so that you can think Because it's an app, it's the uh, yeah, RNC CNC machine. And start getting all your stuff going. But, um, I, don't, I don't know why, but architects love it. Mm. And I'm thinking, it's not just another reason to hate architects. Right. <laughs> Okay. You're actually uh, done. Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say your final goodbyes. Oh, to the I streamers. Thought I, was, I thought I said goodbye right now. Yeah. Sorry, I got I got pulled away on Darnell. Oh, no. So, no, no worries. You're good. I just wanted to get let him know that he's good to go. So say your final. There you go. Say your bye. Bye. Peace. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Go ahead. Take care there.